Yeah, so I'm just going to be drawing and uh, finishing off my 1984 is here. It's taken absolutely ages, not because um, it's taken much longer. It's taken around 200 and something hours over the last 220, 30 hours now. And remember, it's from my imagination, so it takes a little bit more time. But just because of family situations and things just disturbing me when I'm trying to finish it. I had a client's portrait and uh, other things going on, family issues and all that kind of stuff. So I had to keep on stopping and starting, stopping and starting. And uh, that was very frustrating. I think Google, uh, the fascists, are actually the ones that were trying to uh, kind of put a stop to me doing this drawing. Google and obviously Twitter and YouTube. And then, oh, I better put some light on. So I've made some change. I'm going to be talking about a few issues uh, as I'm drawing. So if anyone wants to, uh, let's say... Uh, watch me draw then just watch me draw if you want to listen to me then listen to me i'll put a timestamp at the bottom in a sense that you know i'm going to be talking about three different subjects and that's going to be um the first one is the tommy robinson being freed uh the conversation i had about Je with jedi about the uk uh, and uh, finally seek grooming gangs mm, that should be interesting uh so uh you know, before I go on, I'm, I'm just going to kind of go over what I've made. I've made a few changes. Like the main thing I've done is uh, I actually changed the face a bit. Uh, I wanted to make him look more oppressed. I've made a massive mistake here, though, as you can see. And what's happened is that you can see it's shining a lot. So when, when you see my drawing, you'll see the shine. And I tore the paper by accident. Uh, it happens sometimes when I'm trying to kind of... Um, when I use a scalpel to try and... Uh, you know kind of uh take certain areas out which are, which can't come out with a rubber and i ripped it and so there's this big kind of like shiny blob there because of all the fixative and stuff uh so i've made i've made quite a few changes actually uh, if i'm being honest here uh firstly I, I changed the face so it looks more pressed and uh, the eyes are a bit more uh, uh kind of like let's just say uh they look more kind of fearful uh, the background, I've added in wallpaper and all the little gadgets and all that stuff on the computer. That was an absolute nightmare. Uh, people don't realise the smaller the, the drawing, uh, the more difficult. Uh, so I found that very annoying to do. Uh, soldiers are pretty much done with a hate speech across the thingy. Um, I've added more detail into it. Sorry about the shine, but it's got a bit of fixative on there because it's nearly finished. Uh, added more detail to the phone and I actually um, added in headphones. I thought it looked nice to kind of whirl around like a snake. And so you can see now there's headphones and there's a headphone next to his head as well. Uh, one of the other things is I added blood. Um, so I've made his nose bleed. Uh, so his nose is bleeding now and uh, you've got the... Just because I don't like the light going on there. And now what you got is uh, a pool of blood there. As you can see, headphones, uh, glasses are almost done with the, I made more cracks into the glass, uh, made it look a bit more kind of like, uh, it's more broken now. Uh, the money and stuff, oh, I did a pen as well. I don't know why I thought, let me have, add a pen. And then you have uh, the money and the thingy, the 50p coins and stuff. They're all pretty much done. I might add a little bit more later, uh, see how it looks. So uh, you can see here, uh, that's pretty much done, I think. Uh, I'm going to just tweak a few areas now. So what I'm going to do now is just uh, adjust a few areas. Um, let me just shut that light. So what I'm going to do now is adjust a few areas so that I can uh, uh, kind of finish it off. It should be finished by the weekend, I'm hoping. Um, I've got just a couple of more hours to do on it. Oh, yeah, and I added a cut here. Uh, with the clothes being ripped but i'm not 100 percent happy with it so far so uh, i'm going to be kind of adjusting that slightly um and i'll show you why now and uh, i'll just put a note the thing i'm going to be working on is mainly the cuts so you can see here on my tv i've got a woman with cuts on and so he's got cuts on his head and they don't look realistic now so what i'm trying to do is to try and get the cuts to look more the lighting's terrible in this room to be honest you uh, so all right so what I'm going to do then, um, and uh, before everyone goes on, it is me, obviously. A lot of people think I can't draw. Um, they're kind of shocked. Oh, Raj, how are you drawing? Um, it's, it's not, you know, it's not rocket science. 
Uh, to all my haters, I know they hate the fact I can draw because uh, they're talentless little pricks. And so, obviously, they're quite jealous of the fact that, you know, I can do something that they could never even dream of. And so keep on hating, man. Keep on hating. Uh, I don't blame you hating me. I'd hate myself as well, for, you know, because you know, I'm quite, you know, I'm everything you want to be. Uh, which is quite sad for you guys. Uh, so, uh, what I'll do now then is, let's have a look. So hopefully the lighting isn't too bad because sometimes the lighting's terrible. So you can see here uh, that section there's terrible. It's got a, had a massive cut. So what I what happened was that. Um, let me have a look. Let me try and get a good angle so I can get it. So that, remember, I'm drawing whilst I'm uh, uh, whilst I'm uh, talking as well. So the first thing I'm going to talk about it is Tommy Robinson. And yeah, big up Tommy Robinson, he's freed now. I'm really happy about that. I'm actually quite shocked actually. I didn't think they would do it. But I think because of all the pressure and everything like that. So well done to everybody um, for keeping up the pressure and doing all these uh, doing all these protests. I think that probably did help. Um, and so he's been freed. Uh, before I go on, um, the reason I cut the paper was that like, I had the scalpel. I had to create a little bit of light here, and so I was using a scalpel. I do that a lot. I wouldn't recommend people doing it and using a scalpel unless you're, unless you, you know, you're comfortable using it. I've used a scalpel thousands of times, and so even here, I'm a little bit unhappy with the the shadow underneath here. Actually, to be honest, you uh, with the cut and the clothing. So what I'm going to do? So this is what I did. Yeah, I was uh, doing this, and because I can't, some things with charcoal, you can't just rub out. With a normal, normal, with a rubber, so I use a scalpel to pull out certain things, and I'm not happy with the fact that it's so dark in there. And so what I'm doing is to uh, use a scalpel. But what happened is here when I did that, I scratched the paper and it tore it, and so I had to fix it with a um, fixative, obviously. Uh, yeah, so with Tommy Robinson, I'll go back. Uh, yeah, he's free. Big up Tommy Robinson. Um, you know, I'm really glad. So he's lost a lot of weight. So you know, maybe someone should send me to prison. Uh, let me let me lose a bit of weight as well because I need to lose some seriously. Um, so yeah, it was quite quite a shock to me actually because I spoke about this on Sunday to a few people, and uh, most most I thought to myself, oh, he's not going to get out. They're not going to let him out. They're not going to let him out. Obviously, he's still having a real retrial, and I'm going to say something. Um, he did break the law. In the sense that he was reporting on this crime with this this uh, thingy, so we can't get away from that. But the due process process of the judicial process wasn't followed properly, which is why uh, he's uh, the court of appeal, uh, you know, overturned it, and now they're doing a retrial. Um, he was literally taken from reporting at the court at Leeds Crown Court to prison within like two hours. And does that sound like a, a just system to you? Um, if that happened to everybody, that's fair enough. But it wasn't. So I personally thought he should have just got a fine. But um, obviously the, the, the people are against him. So they chucked him in prison, trying to silence him. Um, and uh, I think it's backfired on them, to be honest with you. Like a lot of things that the government do, they think they can kind of control the people, but then backfires. And um, so... With him, I'm, I'm going to say one thing. Um, when he was in prison, I said one thing, and I kept saying it, uh, and I meant it. Whilst he was in prison, I wasn't going to. I didn't criticize him at all about anything. I just was like on camera. I mean, I was like, no, I'm not going to criticize him because I believe when a man's down, um, don't kick him, uh, support him, you know. But I am not a blind follower of Tommy Robinson. Yeah, I'm telling you that straight now. Uh, so you, I know there's going to be people say, oh, why are you criticizing? No, if I feel he's saying something wrong or doing something wrong, I, I will say he's not infallible. He, he will make mistakes and he's made mistakes. And so he needs to be told about those mistakes. I don't think it was appropriate whilst he was in prison, obviously, because, you know, he had his, um, he had, he had never battle. But whilst he's, uh, now that he's out, um, yeah, I will criticise him on certain things. And a lot of people say to me, oh, you're, you just, oh, you're, you love Tommy Robinson, you're a blind follower. No, I'm not. 
if Tommy Robinson was to come out tomorrow and say uh, all Muslims need to be deported and they can't live in the country, I'd swap sides, man. I would be like, no. And if you, I mean, in the sense that he wants to enact a law or something, I would swap sides. I would just straight away. I would not put up with stuff like that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go. I wouldn't just agree with someone because of that. Uh, because I, I support them on other issues. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much Tommy Robinson. So well done to everybody. Big up Tommy Robinson as well. Um, you know, it's lovely seeing that picture of him with his kids and stuff and his wife. Um, obviously, they can't show their face because, you know, you've got maniacs out there that want to kill him. Um, now what I'm going to talk about is another topic, which was a uh, Jedi... Um, uh, <laughs> You know, and our conversation on Sunday. I've uploaded my version of the video. And I'm not going to lie, in the beginning I was pretty pissed. Yeah. Because uh, I was talking to uh, Vinnie Sullivan and Manny Sinda, big them up as well. And we just got the conversation started. And obviously when you start a conversation, you kind of want to keep it uh, brief and positive maybe to a certain degree. about We were talking about the UK. And guess who was at the corner of my eye? Jedi and I was like oh no as soon as I saw him I was like all right this is not gonna go the way I thought it was gonna go and so I have to admit in the beginning I was like annoyed uh, I was like all right this is gonna be freaking Jedi's corner and uh, you know obviously Jedi is a quite formidable character so it's you can't ignore him like there's certain people you can just ignore but you, it's pretty much impossible to ignore Jedi so I was calling it Jedi's Corner, what are you doing here? But I actually thought it turned out at the end into being a really great conversation. Um, I think sometimes things happen for a reason, like, you know, uh, him coming over and then questioning on certain issues. And uh, he had valid points, you know, he had valid points. Like, you know, I don't, I don't agree with everything uh, that he said. Uh, before I go on, what I'm doing now is that originally, uh, just this is for the artist, sorry, I've just interrupted. There was a really, really dark line here, and I felt it made it look unrealistic. Uh, you need to balance things out. You can't have too much dark and too much light, and that's one of the things I do, unfortunately, when I'm drawing. I tend to kind of, like, uh, put too much light and dark. I mean, these drawings here have come out pretty good, but uh, I have got some other ones that are, like, a freaking nightmare, like, in terms of light and dark, and I've ruined them, so... I'm going to try not to ruin this one. Um, so, yeah, he come over and then we spoke about a few issues, um, obviously about uh, the UK's role in in colonialism and how it's going to destabilise countries and everything like that. And I agree. Um, I don't think colonialism is good. Uh, a lot of people think I agree with colonialism. I just try and look at it in a more nuanced way. Uh, to say something had zero um positive is crazy even the most terrible systems can have a little bit. even communism which is in my opinion a terrible system has a good philosophy behind it and has some good about it but overall it doesn't work so it's a terrible system if it doesn't work as as a whole but small little bits of it are pretty good i'll probably talk about it in the future um same with colonialism, um, so that doesn't mean I support it, I just believe that, you know, uh, I'm going to say something to people, I don't support colonialism, but if democracy, secularism, and um, uh, freedom of speech and stuff like that will not, uh, let's just say, because I'm not sure about it, or, or the common law, I'm not talking about freedoms, the common law and stuff was so shit, why does India still use these systems? So the same way with the Romans when they went around places or, you know, like uh, even in different areas like China and stuff where they where they conquered other areas. Even when you conquer, you can leave. I mean, with the UK, like Jedi pointed out, London was named and found by the Romans. And what do you want to do? Get rid of run London because the Romans came in there and conquered the UK? Um, you want to get rid of the roads, the aqueducts, the thingy, you know, all of this kind of stuff that you know, was a positive, or do you keep the good and get a, get rid of the bad and move on and be a success? I always bash India as a country. Not uh, The reason I bash it is because of, obviously, political reasons about Punjab, but they're doing pretty good overall. I mean, uh, obviously, there's a lot of poverty still, and that needs to be sorted out, and I think that's a lot to do with the caste system as well, which I'll talk about in a future video. But, uh, you know, they're sending... Um, 
I mean, they've got nuclear weapons, they've got a, a big army, they're going to be one of the biggest economies in the world, overtaking the UK. Um, they've got an excellent space program, which is, uh, they sent a Mars probe to, um, obviously to Mars, what am I saying? Um, and, um, you yeah, know, that's, that's, and it's one of the only countries to successfully do that. The UK is one kind of got lost in transit somewhere. And so we've got to be, and they did it at a fraction of cost. So India is doing well in terms of, uh, from uh, at the moment, we don't know what would have happened if they were never colonized. Uh, maybe they would have been a million times more advanced or maybe they would have been worse. We don't know. But, you know, we can't ignore the fact that there are negatives. Um, one of the worst ever uh, crimes against humanity is the, the slave trade, Atlantic and the Arab slave trade um, and any kind of slavery, but especially those, the Atlantic slave trade is a disgrace to um to humanity that we we allowed that to happen um you know i still can't understand the concept of you know uh, buying and selling people and then uh, you know ha using them like stock and so yeah um i always say that i you know when it comes to slavery and stuff uh, people have a valid point you know, slavery is not the same as colonization with colonization uh, you tend to still uh, retain some of your culture and your religion and your uh you know your kind of uh, history and stuff but with slavery that's all decimated and so people who are from a background as slavery and are, are going to be obviously aggrieved um vinnie sullivan big up billy sullivan but damn you said some crazy stuff that day even i gotta say that uh i was like standing up Damn, dude, don't say that. Please don't say that. But it's good to hear people's true thoughts. Are. I always say it's better to hear someone's true thoughts. And it might be uncomfortable. It might even be cringeworthy. It might be thingy. But at least you know where you stand. Like, you know, you can work on them then. And, um, you know, obviously we spoke about other stuff as well. Uh, that went on from that. And then uh, when Rini went, it kind of, I think that the, 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 the our conversations were a little bit better because um, we ended up talking about a subject matter that's kind of close to my heart, which is the kind of uh, uh, problems with the young young men and suicide and the depression and why I think uh, men are being emasculated by the feminazis. Yes, the feminazis, not feminism, feminazis who are trying to make boys into girls and my biggest issue is I think we, we I would like I haven't got it on my channel because I stopped recording but uh, what I do want to do is um, uh, I'm just going to be doing a little bit of the thing so I've kind of uh, softened that side bit because I thought it was too hard before I go into things I softened that and so what I want to do is uh, with these cuts like I said I've got a reference point on the thingy although I am uh, doing it from imagination I've got a reference point for the cuts and I need to kind of like try and make the cuts look more realistic and deep at the moment they just look like they're lines on the face um, uh, yeah I actually put blood on here uh, which uh, I don't know I'm going to leave it I don't want to take the risk messing around with that sometimes what I do but uh, is like I start messing around with things and it gets worse so uh, I'm not going to mess around too much I think sometimes I've got to leave it uh, and move on yeah, yeah, so uh, was talking about, uh, like, you know, at school, when I was at school, and uh, let me just say something, I, I said on the video, like my other video, that uh, the one that's on COE, that, you know, there was fights every day at school, I don't mean fights like, um, you know, after school, that, that happened maybe once or twice a week, but I'm talking about like scuffles in the, the playground, and nothing happened, man, like, even myself, a lot of people think I was quite, must have been quite loud at school, I was one of the quietest kids you're going to meet. You know, very quiet. Maybe I'm making up for lost time now. And um, I just used to sit down drawing most days. That was it. I just used to keep to myself. But even I got into a fight twice in my time at school. And uh, and I was trying to think, do I know anyone that got um, expelled? And I can only remember one person being expelled over six years at my school. And there were fights like scuffles there was thingy in classrooms like i said someone chucked a chair up my head once nothing happened all they did was like took them out of the class and then they came back and then nothing and the reason i'm mentioning is this is like there's certain people that were at my school that 
if you were to judge them by today's kind of standard, you would think they were, they were like maniacs and they will turn into mass murderers if you don't expel them. But I've met some of these guys and they're totally normal. They're just like working in the city or they're doing this, they've got family and kids. And I, I, I think to myself, like, if they were using them by today's standards and they expelled them, their lives would have been ruined. And maybe they would have went down to crime. They might have, uh, you know, kind of got derailed to such a degree that, you know, it's like some of the kids that... I, I think what's happening, like, some of the kids on the street now, you know, there's a lot of gun crime and stuff. I reckon a lot of these people, uh, guys, especially these black boys, are they're being... Because um, before I go on, there are certain communities, yeah, like the, like the Punjabis of India. Like, if you go to the rest of India... The Punjabis, whether they're Muslim, Sikh, uh, Hindu, are different in terms of their characteristics. Uh, we're much more kind of in-your-face, masculine kind of uh, group of people, uh, racially. Uh, you can see the difference when you meet someone from, say, Gujarat, and then you meet someone from the Punjab. And I think um, that's why a lot of Sikhs have problems as well, because we, we've got a very masculine culture where you can't talk about stuff. And so there's a big drink problem with the Muslim community. God knows, it could be extremism, maybe grooving. I don't know what they're doing uh, with the Muslim Pakistani community. And then um, then you have, um, like with the black community, I think, you know, you, you've got these kids that are masculine kids, like, you know, from the black background, say with Sikhs and stuff like that. I mean, if you see a Chinese kid or something, you know, they could sit in a class probably. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm stereotyping, but in, in on average, like, they're not that masculine or aggressive like that and so you have the kids in school probably suppressed they make a mistake and have a fight they're then expelled or something like that they can't really get home because you know you can't kind of back check them and, and oh yeah another thing is the parents can't beat their kids yeah so you then you go home and the parents can't smack them up i believe in hitting your kid once in a while if they mess up what's wrong with that I got hit three times and it was good. I I, I appreciate it, you know. Uh, one of the time, one of the main times was when I uh, didn't go to my GCSEs, and uh, my family got charged for me not sitting any of my exams apart from art. But guess what? It took me time, but I ended up getting a degree. How do I get a degree? Because I have to reset my GCSEs, reset my I re I mean sit A levels and then get a degree. I probably wouldn't have done that if I didn't get hit. I've probably been, oh, it's fine, oh, don't worry, it's cool, man, it's cool, just leave it, it's not a problem. And so, you know, when a kid messes up, smack them. So they, they're, not, they're not allowed to smack the kids at home. These boys are then going to the street, yeah, and the street is like their, uh, let's say they're kind of like place that they can behave like a boy or a man uh, without any kind of, uh, what, I, what I call people, restricting them. But unfortunately, he's going like haywire because you got a lot of these guys, you know, playing out on the street because they're getting, they can't be disciplined at home, they're at school, you know, they're expelled if they do make a mistake, like have a little fight, which it was not, which in my time was relatively normal to have little scuffles and stuff. And uh, I think that's what's causing, like, you know, the, the, the crime wave, like restriction on male masculinity. Just let boys be boys, man. We're not women, like, let us be boys. That's one thing I agree with Islam, is like, we're equal. Well, actually, in Islam, they don't believe we're equal, but um, but we're equal, but different. We can be equal, but different, yeah? And so I think this is one of the problems. Well, I'll expand upon that on thingy. Uh, oh, whatever thing is, i done a video I was last time saying that uh, this uncle, the Black Panther uncle, told me off, and I was like, oh, why did you tell me off? Don't worry, that's been sorted out now. I think it was Mike might have, like, spoken to him, but... He kind of come up to me and that's, I feel better now actually because I hate I hate having a, a dispute with somebody when I know there was no real dispute uh, or misunderstanding. Uh, if it was a real misunderstanding, I can understand, especially if they're kind of like someone I respect because he's an elderly guy, older older gentleman, and he's a Black Panther. So you know, I've always gone on with him. So yeah, that's been sorted out. Um, yeah, so hopefully I'll speak about that. Uh, in a, in a video with Jedi and them, like we can kind of expand upon that. Now, what I'm doing is kind of just touching stuff up at the moment, not touching it like that, you perverts, but uh, just touching stuff up, uh, kind of tweaking stuff and adding a slight bit more detail. Um, yeah, I don't know if this looks like glass. If people think this looks like glass, I'd appreciate people kind of like commenting because making stuff look like glass is a freaking nightmare. 
Uh, yeah, the other thing is now we're going to go on to... Oh, I'm going to have to put my face on this one. Seek grooming gangs. There's been all these videos addressed to me, Raj. These are seek grooming gangs. Seek grooming gangs. Seek grooming gangs. Yeah. Now, let's have a look. Here's some of the videos. They always put my name in it. I never seek pedophile. Raj speakers corner. Seek guy. I never seek guy. Uh, over here. He was from a Sikh guy. I don't deny that they're Sikh. You can obviously tell this guy is a Sikh. They may not be practicing, but they're still Sikhs. Unlike Muslims, I don't say they're not Sikhs. I condemn these guys and uh, our community will ostracize them. We'll make sure that they uh, know that what they've done is totally wrong. Unlike your community, the Muslim Asian community. Um, you know, uh, the definition of a gang, let's have a look. Yeah, because you're calling them gangs. These are individual people. Yeah, there's not a gang around them. They're individuals, yeah, and there's bad apples in every community. A gang is an organised group of criminals like this. Yeah? That's a gang. What's happening there is an individual pervert is behaving in a way that is, a, is, is, a, is in a terrible fashion and they will be dealt with. Now, with you, with the Asian Muslim community, they are behaving in a gang. You can take a girl, um, let me just show you something. Here it is again. Remember this drawing that I did? Remember the perpetrators? Yeah, that's a gang, yeah. With the gangs, yeah, what they do, yeah, is they're working in a whole group. And the Asian Muslim community for 40 years has been doing this, yeah. Not all of them, obviously, but I still believe that there are people that knew and they didn't say anything, and that's just as bad in a way. Uh, I remember people from the Sikh community going to the mosques and asking their mans to sort this out in the 80s and 90s, nothing, 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 nothing's happening, nothing's happening, and now look what's happened. Uh, it's blown up because they wouldn't deal with it. Um, so, when it comes to the Asian Muslim community, it's a gang. You know, you have whole families uncles brothers i mean there's one case with four brothers yeah all went prison one of them didn't but uh, i mean one there was five brothers but one of them didn't all of them went prison yeah you have uncles um nephews whole families yeah going around grooming little girls yeah and prostituting them out and uh, uh, abusing them and stuff now this, these cases until you can find a gang of sikhs working together in an organized way they are not gangs, they are individual perverts, yeah? Uh, the, way, the way we know that these uh, particular grooming gangs, the Muslim grooming gangs, are gangs, um, is that there's cases where a girl who was being abused would try and their family would try and get out by moving to a new location. But because of all these gangs, remember gangs were interconnected, they ended up still being able to abuse the girl. Because all they did was just pass her details on, and when she went to another area, they managed to get her through there. So that is the real definition of a gang. So stop trying to uh, pass the buck onto the Sikh community. Everyone has problems with abuse within their community, but we don't have an epidemic of thousands upon thousands of young girls being groomed by a whole group of uh, a community, the Asian Muslim community. You can like it. Yeah, or you can bitch and cry as much as you want, yeah. I don't care. You know, I have people coming up to me in Speaker's Corner and going, Raj, you know, please don't say this. Please don't say that. You know, you're hurting our feelings. I don't give a shit about your feelings, if I'm being honest to you. I am polite to people when I see them because, I, you know, I have sympathy sometimes because I know some of these guys are genuinely not part of this thing. But you've got to take responsibility for your community. You can't just keep them passing the buck and saying, Jimmy Savile, oh, this and that and all that kind of stuff. Uh, just take responsibility. Your community has a massive problem with grooming. Pointing out a few handful of Sikh men or people from uh, people that are Sikh that are doing this year is not going to stop the fact that your community is messed up. And your biggest vice, the Sikhs might have an alcohol problem. Your biggest vice is grooming of young girls and prostituting them out. Now I'm going to say something. Just stop raping. That's it. Yeah, I know it's controversial because uh, people don't like me saying that, but it's very simple. If there's someone in your community and you know they're doing something, just out them. See these guys that did what they did on that camera or uh, being filmed? They are gonna, they're going to have a lot to answer for. Trust me. 
Trust me, they're not going to be like put under, they're not going to be like in the Asian Muslim community, I'll oh, just suddenly forget about it and then, you know, uh, the guys move on and uh, they accept them back in the community. No, they'll be ostracized forever. Trust me. Yeah, we don't accept stuff like that. It happens, but it's not a gang. So, so people coming up to me, it's a gang, 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 gang. Uh, not gang, gang like that gang, but uh, yeah, they gang, but it's a gang of uh, Sikhs. It's not, it's individuals. Um, all right, so I'm not going to talk no more about that. I'm going to be meeting Bob the Builder later today, actually. Uh, we've never really met, and so uh, I had to go City today, and uh, I arranged to meet with him at the same time. I'll probably do a little interview and put it up. Uh, we've never really had a chance to talk properly at Speaker's Corner, because he's. I'm always getting kind of like, I'm always busy, and he's always busy, and so I don't, I don't really want to talk to Bob the Builder out there, because it's, it's a kind of a negative place to a certain degree to have a good conversation, so I'm going to meet him. I've got a few other things that I need to discuss with him anyway. Uh, yeah, the Christian Sikh Alliance, uh, I know people aren't going to like that. Uh, <laughs> they're going to go mad. Uh, Bob the Builder, big up Bob the Builder. The, the. Alright, so uh, what I'll do now is I'm just going to talk for a few minutes, and then... Um, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going Speaker's Corner this week. I'll have to ch I'll have to double check. I'm not sure. I shouldn't really because I've got things to do, man. Yeah, but uh, I might, I might not. I don't know. I'm going to depend on the day I'll decide. But I probably won't, I don't think, because I, I need to get things sorted out. Um, so if you don't just watch me drawing now, so I'll just describe what I'm doing. So obviously... Oh, yeah, I actually also worked on the hair, and the hair is darker now. It's still a bit of a mess, if I'm being honest. I'm not totally happy with it. Uh, yeah, so you know, I think this, I'm not going to work it too much. My biggest problem is I work the drawing too much and I end up ruining them. So I need to just kind of be a bit more careful. Uh, so obviously what I do as well now is that I'm going to be using an electric eraser. And all that's going to do is just pull out a little bit of white because you don't want it to be too dark. So you can see. Uh, yeah, so look. Just so it looks like it's an open wound. And that will allow me to kind of, you know, make it look a bit more realistic. And, uh, and the same with this one. I'm, the problem is the blood dripping down looks weird. Uh, see, right now, you can see even when I um, hit the electric eraser on it, it didn't work. Uh, so sometimes I have to do this, like get a scalpel. And thinking you know, this is where it gets tricky. Yeah, this is the thing about drawing; it is much harder than other mediums, just because of the fact that you know you don't have that. With paint, you can just paint on top. With digital, you can just reverse the thingy. But with this, you can't. You've got no real choice. You just uh, it's just if once you've made a mistake, you've made a mistake. Nothing you can do. I can't even scratch it off with a scalpel. Uh, so let me have a look. I'm trying to think what else I need to do. Um, yeah, I don't want to work it. There's, the light on it is um, a little bit weird, so it looks a bit, a little bit odd. But uh, I'm just trying to figure out. Yeah, I think this. The, if, if what happened before is that originally what I did, I had I used this under here, and that gave two darks, and that caused the problem, making it look a bit weird. And so that's why I scratched it off. That's just a um, a mistake. Sometimes happens because I'm, I haven't got a reference point. And so I'm just thinking, so obviously you have the dastardly Google on them lot. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it, all I can do. I know it doesn't look like I've done much, but at least I've kind of done something. You can see it's uh, it should be done by the weekend, hopefully by Sunday. And then uh, today's actually Friday. I'll be uploading this video tomorrow. Uh, so... On Sunday, I should have it done, and then we can kind of. Uh, I have to get it scanned as well, so because the drawing's so large, I have to scan the drawing, and uh, so it takes a bit of time. I could go somewhere in the city to get it done, and uh, yeah, you can see. So obviously, yeah, the light is a freaking nightmare. Uh, I think he looks more scared now. Um, he looks more terrified, whereas before he just looked like he was like, you know, uh, about to fall asleep or something. He didn't look fearful for his life. So I think that looks better now. 
the cut and even that cut you can see is good. see so you can see now that the wound looks deeper than it did before uh, whereas before it just looked like it was uh, just a just a line on the head so anyway um, this will be done at some point and so I can't wait to put it up and 1984 is there and the fascist uh, YouTube and Facebook and those guys are going to be exposed. Anyway, take care.